Armor changed the nature of modern war. The presence of tracked vehicles and postscriptum is imposing and powerful. A talented tank crew can change the outcome of a battle. The influence of these mechanical beasts was further bolstered by the recent introduction of the armored game mode and the improvement of the game's dynamic vehicle damage model. In the next few minutes, you'll learn the controls, tactics, and information required to plow through your enemies like Patton and Postscriptum. Here we go. Approach your tank and press and hold F to enter. Once inside the tank, you can switch between the seats inside the crew by pressing the F keys. F1, F2, F3, and F4 will cycle you through the driver, gunner, waste gunner, and commander. The driver is responsible for route selection, movement, and executing the commands of the vehicle commander while enabling the gunner to accurately engage targets. Use the mouse wheel to toggle you through three viewing modes. You can open the hatch for the greatest field of view, but this will expose you to small arms fire. Alternatively, continue to operate the mouse wheel, and you can elect to use two different levels of the periscope. Pressing Q in any of these views will toggle the zoom. Press and hold E to turn the engine on or off. By default, when you enter a vehicle, the engine will be off, so you'll have to press E before you move. Drive the vehicle using the W, A, S, and D keys. Press the spacebar to slam on the brakes, which is critical to allow the gunner to fire accurately or when stopped on a slope. All right, stop moving, stop moving. The gunner is responsible for engaging enemy targets, communicating with the driver and commander, and selecting the correct type of ammunition for the target. Once again, use the mouse wheel to toggle you through viewing modes. Your options are gun optic and periscope. Press the Q in either of these views to toggle zoom. Control the turret with the W, A, S, and D keys. To increase or decrease your turret speed, hold down the control button and then use your mouse wheel. When engaging targets at range, it is wise to reduce your turret speed so you have better control. However, if you need to rapidly traverse to get eyes on an enemy target, you'll want to increase your turret speed. You can engage targets with your main gun by clicking the left mouse button. Similarly, you can use your coaxial machine gun by right clicking. You can cycle ammo types by pressing 1 or 2. Select HE, high explosive rounds, to engage enemy infantry and soft skin vehicles. Select AP, armor piercing rounds, to engage enemy armored vehicles. When toggling between ammo types, there will be a slight pause between each transition. Look at the bottom right of your screen to know when you're ready to fire. The Waste Gunner is responsible for destroying enemy infantry, communicating with the rest of the crew, and suppressing enemy positions while the primary gunner is reloading. Just as you did in the other seats, use the mouse wheel to toggle through your viewing modes, and use Q to zoom in and out. Engage targets with your main mouse button and reload ammo cans with R. The commander is responsible for leading the tank crew. He communicates with adjacent squads and the higher headquarters to ensure the tank is supporting the rest of the team. He directs the driver where to drive and the gunner where to fire. He marks targets and coordinates resupply and repairs. Just as you did in the other seats, use the mouse wheel to cycle through your various viewing modes. Similar to the driver, the commander can unbutton, meaning he can expose himself through the top hatch. This will significantly improve his ability to observe, but it will also expose him to enemy fire. Press Q while in each of these views to toggle your zoom. While in the turret periscope mode, you can hold control and then traverse with the mouse to rotate the periscope up to 360 degrees in most tanks. Mark targets by holding down T and then selecting the appropriate icon. Every vehicle crew member is equipped with a wrench. If your vehicle is damaged, an icon will appear on your HUD indicating which module is out of commission. Crew members can dismount the tank, equip the wrench, and then click and hold to repair the damaged component and restore the vehicle's mobility. Press and hold X while in any position inside the vehicle to bandage yourself and stop bleeding. Now let's talk tanks. Tanks in Postscriptum are divided into four categories. Light, medium, heavy, and tank destroyers. Light tanks lack the firepower and armor to deal with most other tanks effectively. They should, for these reasons, be restricted to anti-infantry support, hunting down trucks and giving intel to the platoon commander. They are excellent infantry support vehicles due to their quick reload speed and multiple machine guns. High mobility means they can relocate quickly, making hit and run attacks highly disruptive to the enemy. Light tanks in this category include the M5 Stuart. Medium tanks can be deceivingly good. Medium tanks combine attributes from both heavy tanks and light tanks, usually keeping the best of both worlds. 
They're faster in mobility than heavy tanks and better armed and armored than light tanks. Medium tanks are best used offensively and are the most suited vehicles for tank versus tank combat. They can outgun light tanks and outmaneuver heavy tanks. In dire situations, they can also be used as infantry support. Notably, the Sherman Firefly, the newest tank, has the ability to deploy both high explosive and smoke shells. Medium tanks include the Cromwell, the M4 A3 Sherman, the Panther, Panzer III, Panzer IV Golf, and the Sherman Firefly. Heavy tanks are painfully slow and very hard to maneuver. You should avoid taking them into urban areas as they can easily get stuck if they come under fire. It is best to have a light tank or a lightly armored vehicle supporting you, as you will be busy dealing with the enemy armor, which leaves you open to being flanked by the infantry. You shouldn't stay in one spot for a long period of time though, as heavy tanks have a high profile, they're very easily spotted, and they're a great target for a bombing run. Bombs coming in. Heavy tanks include the Tiger E1, the Churchill Mark IV, the Renault B1, and the Matilda. Tank destroyers are a very unique class of vehicle. They're best used as ambush vehicles due to the complete lack of a rotating turret. They're prone to being flanked by the infantry, and they perform poorly in urban areas. However, they're excellent for ambushing enemy tanks, positioning themselves in defilade to take long-range shots, and they're incredibly fun to try and drive. Tank destroyers include the Stug 3, the Jagdpanzer 4, and the Jagdpanzer 470. The dynamic damage model was introduced on February 4th, 2019 with the Vigal update. It's imperative that great tank crews understand how the damage model works so that you can use it in the game to exploit the enemy. The new damage model takes a look at every weapon that has a chance of penetrating tank armor. Each of these weapon systems is given a value of armor that it can penetrate. Each tank then has its own armor thickness value per polygon of that tank's structure. In the image that you're looking at right now, the more white you see, the thicker that polygon is and the more difficult it will be for a projectile generated from an anti-tank weapon to pass through that polygon. Each polygon is assigned this thickness based on the historical data available for that vehicle. When a projectile collides with one of these polygons, the game automatically calculates the relative armor thickness of that exact polygon. And then if the penetration value of this shell is higher than the armor thickness, the projectile will pass through the metal. If not, it will bounce off. If the projectile does manage to penetrate the tank's hull, it will then look to see what component was behind it. Each vehicle in Postscriptum is now filled with internal components. In the image you're looking at right now, the blue component is a crewman. The red is an ammo rack or a fuel tank. Yellow is a turret ring. Pink is the engine and green is the tracks. Each component inside a tank has a percentage chance of being damaged when it is struck by a projectile that is able to pass through a hole. Those percentages are as follows. If a crew member is struck, there's a 50% chance that they will be damaged by a projectile that passes through and then strikes that component. There's a 100% chance for the turret, 75% chance for ammo and fuel, 100% chance for the engine, and 100% chance for the tracks. Guys, this channel is all about telling epic digital stories, using tactical shooters and simulators as a platform to do it. Videos like this give you the information and tactics you need to crush your opponents, and some of my other content shares the digital battlefield exploits that will motivate you to get back into the fight. Subscribe now, and welcome to the crew.